So let's get started. So Node.js, you're going to first need to install Node.js, and I'm not going to really go over the install process. There's a lot of great tutorials out there, uh, resources for how to install Node on your particular platform. I'm using OS X on the Mac, and once you have Node installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is install the sales module. And you might be asking yourself, like I did, what the heck is a module? Well, a module, if you're coming from a Rails background, is very similar to a gem. And if you're in a Rails app, you might use bundle install to install a gem uh, into your project. In this case, we're going to use npm. We're going to use npm install to install the module, and they they work they work in a similar way. Uh, when you install Node.js, you you got npm for free. It's already installed. So Let's install first uh, sal the sales module. And you do that by going to the command line and typing in npm install sales with uh, this one added configuration of dash G, which stands for global, because we want to install sales in a global way so that we can create projects basically from anywhere. So go ahead and do that. I've already done it. And once that's installed, to create a new project is very easy. It's just sales new. I'm going to call this project sales demo. And boom, it's done. So let's go into sales demo. And let's take a look at what sales built here. So on the right hand side, we have a, just a generic Rails scaffold. Um, and I'm looking at the gem file. Here we're going to look at a a file called package.json and it acts very similar to to a gem file and that it shows its dependencies the the package.json file actually does some other things that we'll talk about later but for my purposes this is showing the dependency um, of sales right now sales is installed globally but if we went back into the console here and we just typed npm install what that would do is install all the modules sales included, all of sales and all of its dependencies in this directory uh, structure. This has the kind of added benefit of having everything uh, in one place. And since hard drives space is cheap, why not? All right. So the first thing I want to do uh, to create the scaffold, well, first, let's just see if the, the doggone thing's working. So we'll go ahead and do sales lift, which is how to start the server. And you can see this is on port, uh, it listens on port 1337. So we will look on localhost, port 1337, and lo and behold, it works. So let's go back in, and the first thing I want to do is create a controller. So I'm going to say sales generate controller. I'm going to call this controller user. And the next thing I'm going to do we're going to create our model and it's going to be also called user and it's going to have two fields name, it's going to be a string and email is also going to be a string. So now we have our controller and our model, and although I'm not going to get into kind of just add water API generation that Sales um, also excels in, that is, we can launch Sales right now, and I've got a uh, a pretty robust API. Actually, I could do this right here. And we could start adding records, fields. I'm going to do this in a Chrome extension called Postman. Um, let's go ahead and add John Galt and John Wayne. And how about John Doe? OK, so right there, when we refresh, we're basically looking at a default index action and we have um, access uh, to those records. So in the next screencast, we're going to go 
back into our user controller and flesh out all those actions.